Hi, everybody. This is Adam Ellenboss from Nightlight Astrology. It's July 26th, and today I'm doing a little piece on Mercury retrograde. So um, I get questions all the time, all year round, about Mercury retrogrades. Um, I've talked about retrogrades at length in other videos, but I'll say, I'll repeat a few key things that you should know about retrogrades in general, as well as what you can expect from this particularly um, fiery Mercury retrograde, which is taking place in the sign of Leo. So um, let's start by uh, uh, looking at the basics here. You should be able to see uh, on the screen um, Mercury stationing right now today in the sign of Leo. Uh, this chart's just a random chart generated to uh, New York, New York uh, right now at about 9.18 in the morning Eastern time. Um, so it's pretty late this evening, late tonight into early tomorrow morning that Mercury will officially start moving backward in the sky. Uh, if you don't know what a Mercury retrograde is, very basically, it is the apparent backward motion of Mercury in the sky. So typically we see Mercury going through the zodiac in a particular direction out in space. And then occasionally from planet Earth, as we are watching the heavens up above, uh, Planets will appear to turn backward, and Mercury, when it turns retrograde, will start appearing to move in the reverse order of the zodiac, going backward through the zodiac. And when that happens, you'll hear astrologers always sort of making a fuss about it, like, okay, you're, there's going to be breakdowns in communication or delays, or there might be uh, problems with technology or computers, be careful of signing contracts, um, You'll see all of this kind of stuff and more whenever Mercury goes retrograde. In fact, it's probably one of the most um, popularized astrological transits. Like even people who don't really care about astrology will be like, oh, Mercury's retrograde because it, it's, it's become more common. And that's due in large part to the, you know, an increase of intelligent astrologers out there talking about Mercury retrograde, but also an increase of... Um, you know, just YouTube astrologers and so forth to talking about astrological stuff in general. And then there's a lot of hype that surrounds Mercury retrograde in particular, because it's one of the transits that people generally think of as more inconvenient. Inconvenient because uh, retrogrades, again, of all kinds, whether it's Mercury or any other planet can be associated with delays, breakdowns, frustration, uh, reversals of fortune, etc. Now, why is this? Um, very basically, it's as though in astrology, every planet has uh, a, a representative capacity. It represents something about us, something about the world. In general, the world works by moving forward in time. We have an experience of moving day by day through time in a kind of linear direction. And as we move forward in time, we also have desires and actions and choices that we um, choices that we make. So, whereas uh, you know Venus represents love and Mars represents you know like war or aggression or competition or something like that, Mercury naturally represents uh, technology, the mind, information, the intellect, communication, um, things like that. So. Um, when any planet turns retrograde, whatever it represents and however it reflects something about our will and our volition in the world relative to the themes or energies of the planet, you may start to see those themes go through a period of breakdown, frustration, delay, setbacks, etc. And the basic idea behind that is that the normal forward motion of the planet is like our normal forward motion through life. I'm acting, I'm choosing, I'm making decisions sort of forward in time based on my will. Um, every planet is in a, in a way related to one's will. But then what happens is the planet slows down, it stops, and then it starts moving backward, which we can think of as basically representing a period where um, some element of your life, some element of your preference about how things go or how, how things turn out, what the kind of outcomes that you would like based upon the choices that you're making in different areas of your life will start to break down. You will lose control. You, you will be subsumed by circumstances that are outside of your control. There will be delays or frustrations, reversals of fortune. Well, it was going this way, but now everything's falling apart or it's going the opposite way. Um, 
So that's what retrogrades generally reflect is that kind of breakdown. And it's frustrating for us because we like to think that we're in control of everything. But actually, um, many different mystics around the globe for thousands of years have told us that we are not nearly as free as we think we are. If you want to test how free you are, uh, one great way of doing so is to try restraining from, say, drinking caffeine or eating sugar or uh, eating you know, junk food or staying up too late or anything that requires restriction or control of the senses is very, very difficult. And all mystics have told us that in order to become truly free, we have to learn how to, on some level, control our senses or have a more conscious relationship with them. Because unless we do, we are being driven by them unconsciously. So retrogrades are often periods of time where the illusion of control breaks down. It's not necessarily that we're always in control as much as we are being steered by different kinds of unconscious forces in our lives. Retrogrades are therefore also a great opportunity for us to sort of look at um, what kinds of unconscious forces are driving us. And you can always tell because when the unconscious forces uh, don't uh, continue operating the way that we're used to, when we're not in the driver's seat anymore, you know, when we're blocked from our caffeine, so to speak, or when something just comes into our lives and says, no, you can't do this the way you're used to doing it any longer, or there's going to be some obstacles or delays or setbacks or reversals or what have you, then uh, suddenly we also have an opportunity to become more aware of whatever the behavior is. We say, gosh, I'm really addicted to caffeine because look, I just, uh, you know, I almost killed my partner because I couldn't have it this morning or, you know, whatever. So retrogrades, while they may frustrate something or they may delay or set us back, they can also show us where we are most unconsciously stuck in some kind of pattern or behavior. So they offer opportunities for revision, not just reversal, but also revision and a deeper awareness of what's happening internally or on a more unconscious level. Okay, so all of that being said, um, this Mercury retrograde is happening in the fire sign of Leo. It's taking place uh, starting tonight, it'll, it lasts. They, you know, they don't last very long. So by August twentieth, Mercury will station and turn direct. So it's a, you know, it's a period of three to four weeks, roughly. So um, <clears throat> let's talk a little bit about what you can expect from this particular retrograde. Now, if you want to kind of get a sense of what this retrograde is all about you can easily think back to what was happening in the summer of 2011 and 2012, particularly July and August. That was the last time that Mercury was retrograde in the sign of Leo. So if you look back to that time, and if you know something about your birth chart, if you look at the whole sign house that Leo um, occupies in your birth chart, then you can take a look at what top topics were likely active back then and get some sense of what topics are likely to be active now. How did you handle things back then? Gives you some insight as to what may come up now and how to handle it because sometimes the patterns or themes will recur. Um, also, take note of any changes, revisions, delays, or setbacks that are happening now and over the next three or four weeks and then ask yourself the question, why is this happening? Get curious about why it's happening. Because the delays or setbacks are part of the natural unfolding of destiny. Even if it's frustrating, there's an opportunity for insight and growth if you take a moment to sort of check in with yourself and get curious about why whatever is happening, uh, whatever is frustrating, um, is occurring. Why is this going on? Remember that retrogrades are normal. They happen frequently. Don't flip out. Don't get superstitious about it. Just live your life. Um, and um, remember also that Mercury in particular, Hermes in, in the Greek world, is, was thought of as a guide of souls or the psychopomp. So whenever Mercury turns retrograde, Hermes is preparing to take us into the underworld. Let me show you an example of this in the chart. So you may notice that when I rotate this into the western sky. I'll annotate this for you so you can see. So here's Mercury in the western sky. The sun is just below the horizon, which is marked by this DS line. So the sun has set, but you'll notice that Mercury is still hanging in the sky. 
This means that Mercury above this DS line is hanging in the western sky in the evening after the sun has set, making it what we call an evening star. So what's going to happen is that as day after day after day, Mercury is going to start retrograding and notice it's coming closer and closer to the sun, which means it's going to lose its visibility. Right now, it's visible as the evening star, but as the retrograde unfolds and Mercury falls back toward the sun, it will be consumed, even burnt up in a sense, by the sun. And then <clears throat> it will retrograde to the other side of the sun behind it and then gain separation. What does that mean? That means that um, Mercury will begin rising in the morning. So you can see right here, for example, now Mercury is right on the ascendant, the rising place in the east in the morning time, rising into the visible sky prior to the sun, making it a morning star. So the change between morning and evening star for Mercury take over the next few weeks um, takes Mercury into, um, oh, you know what? I'm not sure if you could see that. Let me, I think my screen was, here, let me show you that again because I think that my screen goofed up here. Okay. Here, I'll show you it again. Let's go back here. I had a cool drawing and I think my screen was not active. All right, so <clears throat> if we go back. Okay, so here's Mercury again in the Western sky. Sorry guys. Here is Mercury in the Western sky. You'll notice the descendant line, the sun is right below it and Mercury is hanging in the sky above the western horizon, making it an evening star. Then what happens, as I illustrated just a minute ago, is day after day after day, Mercury will sink down in the sky toward the sun and sink below the horizon. It's consumed by the sun, which means you can't see it in the evening anymore. You can't see it at all because it's traveling so close to the sun that it's sort of burnt up. But if you keep going through the retrograde, Mercury comes out on the other side of the sun, right? And then... When we move forward, then you'll see that Mercury is now going to um, rise in the morning prior to the sun. So here's Mercury now above the eastern horizon over here, having just risen, and the sun is below the eastern horizon, called the ascendant, and uh, has not yet risen, making Mercury a morning star. So that's the basic idea of the transition that happens. Now remember, Mercury is Hermes, the psychopomp, the guide of souls. Mercury, when it turns retrograde, guides, uh, in a sense, is guiding us down into the underworld before being reborn as the morning star. So you can think over the next few weeks also of the entire transformation of Mercury retrograde as a journey into the underworld. That means that there's a theme of descent, uh, possibly decline, moving into more subtle spaces or more unconscious territories, and then experiencing a kind of rebirth over the next weeks as Mercury then rises as a morning star and announces some kind of newness or some insights that have been gained or some possible revision that's ready to be implemented in our lives. So that's also part of the process of a Mercury retrograde, of this sort of death and rebirth of Mercury from evening to morning star, descending into the underworld, coming back up. And you want to think in particular about changes that are mental, intellectual, communicative, maybe related to technology, how you think, how you learn, ideas, and evaluation, reconsideration, revision, um, learning about what's unconscious, and maybe coming through the other side with some insights. Now, as Mercury changes into the morning star, it also becomes more yang. When it rises in the morning before the sun in the morning sky, it's a yang time of day, which means that Mercury is more like a, um, a firebrand, a whistleblower, an evangelist, a public preacher, Mercury takes on much more fiery, intense, active, assertive qualities. Whereas right now, when Mercury is an evening star, it's more yin. It's more um, aware of public perception. It's more relational. It's more diplomatic. It's more um, uh, passive or um, careful and, and thoughtful and um, even cautious. Uh, but it's also um, uh, in some ways more eloquent, more poetic. 
So the yin change, when Mercury retrogrades, it also means that Mercury is going to go through a rebirth. And for a period of time, while Mercury is the morning star, Mercury is much more sort of flaming and passionate and fiery and assertive. Well, this is a big deal because the sun right now is already in a fire sign, which is by nature more assertive. So you should be especially careful over the next few weeks, the tendency for aggressive, forceful, or proud communication to get the best of you. Um, like when Mercury changes positions as it's going through this transition, it's also getting closer to the sun, which means that it's getting burnt up by the light of the sun. So all of these themes, plus the fire switching to morning star, young, that Mercury in Leo, pride, boastful, arrogant, narcissistic, potentially ego, you know, sort of filled with itself. That's the shadow side of this transit where Mercury can um, become uh, very stuck on itself in Leo and sort of too proud, too boastful. Um, but as it changes positions, there can also be insights and you could gain courage or gain a sense of um, your own personal specialness and the ease with which you communicate or assert yourself in the world with a little bit more confidence could also be there. So that's kind of the light and dark of it. But you want to um, also just watch in the news. It'll probably be pretty obvious, especially since our president has Leo rising. You may see the tendency for, uh, you know, that uh, intensity of the, the fire surrounding, you know, speech and uh, possibly bombastic or et cetera. Um, not that he has any problem with uh, being, you know, in the spotlight like that with Mars on his ascendant, but you get what I'm saying. Anyway, you should see it in the news. Um, then remember, wherever there's a breakdown, wherever something doesn't work or there's a delay or a frustration, um, or wherever something is reversed unexpectedly, we can either sort of rail against it, which is sort of fruitless because you're railing against karma and the laws of the universe, or you can get curious about what's happening. Like I said earlier, you can make an assumption that the divine intelligence doesn't make mistakes and take an opportunity to return to our chairs and become students of our lives again, which sometimes we forget to do because we think we're calling all the shots. And so in the sign of Leo, um, there may be lessons around pride and humility. There may be lessons about um, confidence and knowing your own worth and specialness. There may be issues related to men, fathers, or authority figures, sun kinds of, of topics with the Mercury in the sun sign, or to our pride, our ego, and our sense of you know, power or authority in a not so good way, also sun things. One thing that I wrote today in my horoscope and I was writing about Mercury retrograde is this, I said, a sign of greatness is the excitement that we feel when we are humbled. We can and even should feel excited when we are humbled because being humbled is a mercy that returns us to ourselves, to our true size and place in the universe. And it's only from the place of our authentic spiritual position, one little but sacred part of the whole, that we may fulfill our actual destiny. And we stand no chance to find our spiritual calling in life if we're constantly stepping outside of ourselves, living in the midst of a puffed up chest or in the white noise of our most prideful complaints. Why be excited when we are humbled? Because it's a sign of respect that the universe would prefer us just as we are, simple, beautiful children of the divine. So I hope that this gives you some good things to think about for uh, this upcoming Mercury retrograde. And Leo, I'd love to hear from you guys and how some of your experiences turn out. So feel free to comment on this video and tell me how it's going for you, what you learn, what you notice. And um, we will be back probably tomorrow for a video on the big lunar eclipse in Aquarius tomorrow as well. Lots of stuff going on right now. All right. Blessings, everyone. You guys have a great day. Take care.